Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can create a hover effect for a list section in Squarespace that looks like this and another one that looks like this. Now, as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but as I'm sure you can imagine, we've got quite a few things to change to make this look perfect on your own website. So let's hop on into Squarespace and I'll show you how this works. So here we are in my Squarespace 7.1 website. And before we get into any code, I have three important things to mention. The first two are about the type of list section. I want you to make sure you're using a simple list design and that you have the position set to equal height. I'll show you how to edit both of those in just a second here. I also wanted to mention there are no hover effects on a mobile device because mobile devices don't have cursors. So the two codes are going to change how it looks on mobile. Let's go ahead and hop into edit mode. We'll make those design changes and we'll get into the code. All right, so scrolling down here, I'm gonna select edit content and I want you to make sure that under the design tab, you've selected simple list. These codes will not work for banner slideshow and they won't work for carousel. It needs to be simple list. And scrolling down to the bottom under size and space, I want you to click on that and scroll all the way down to the bottom of this menu where it says position. Here, select equal height. We need to make sure that the content is of equal height so our codes are easy to update based off of the actual size of the content, okay? Awesome, so one last time, we're in edit mode, hop into edit content, make sure your design is simple list and under size and space, make sure that you've selected equal height position. Ready to rock? All right, let's get to some code. I'm gonna select save and we're gonna navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS at the bottom. Now I'll scroll down here so we can see the list section. We currently have the images and then the content underneath. And I'll paste our first code here and then we'll walk through it piece by piece so you understand how it works. This is the first code in the description. Now you'll notice we've already got a change here. The images have gone grayscale. And when I hover over them, they'll go full color and the content will be displayed on top of the image. Pretty cool, right? Awesome, so this is how this code works. This first part of it, you're definitely going to want to change. This is margin top negative 74%. I'll go ahead and break this out into a new line so it's easier to see. Margin top negative 74. That is set for the size of the content I have for these specific list items. If you have less content or more, you're gonna to wanna to change this. If I adjust this to maybe 60, for example, You'll notice this pushes the content farther down the image and it's not in line with the bottom of the image block itself. For the particular layout I'm going for, 74% seem to be just right. Edit that number so it looks perfect on your own site. After that, we have the linear gradient for the background. This fades into a solid black color at the bottom there. You can change that gradient to any color you want. I've added some padding to give the text a little space. If I remove that line of code, you'll see not only does it change the actual percentage we'll need to adjust the margin, but it pushes the text all the way to the side of the image. I didn't like that look, so I said padding one REM, and that changed the position of the text and gave us a little bit more wiggle room with that margin on the top. So adjust that however you see fit. Transition one second, I put that in here so it wouldn't be an instant transition. It would take one second to load, so it made it slightly smoother. You can adjust this number to five seconds if you want to, or remove it completely if you want it to be an instant change, totally up to you. These last two items I want you to leave alone. Z index 99 keeps that text on top of the image and opacity zero makes sure that that text isn't visible when you're not in hover mode. So if we remove this, you'll see the text will now constantly be visible. So the only change we're really going to get is going to be that grayscale to full color hover effect. So if you wanna leave it like that on desktop, totally up to you. Personally, I think opacity zero is perfect. So it shows up on a hover. That was the design effect I was going for. All right, underneath that, we have two different items. I need to space these out so they're a little bit easier to read. There we go. This first one says when we hover over the item, hover over the list item, take that content, make sure it's 100% visible. And again, we've got that one second transition, so it's not instant. So now we'll be getting that content change where it becomes visible on a hover. 
After that is just the actual color of the text itself. This little asterisk is just kind of a catch all. I went ahead and changed the color to a solid white so we can see it. You can do that in your site styles menu if you want to. It was just easy for me to pop that in there with code. Totally up to you. Now scrolling down here, I'll go ahead and separate these as well. There we go. This next item right here says go ahead and take that list item media, which is the image, and make sure it is 100% grayscale. After that, we have the line that says on a hover, go ahead and make sure it's full color or 0% grayscale. If you don't want that color change, that's fine. Just remove the two lines of code for list item media and you'll get that full color image that won't be part of your transition. If you do want it, go ahead and leave it there and you can reverse it. Change this one to a zero and change that zero to a one and now we'll have a full color image that goes grayscale on a hover. Pretty cool, right? All right, I'll go ahead and switch that back to how it was before. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and hop into mobile preview. Last but not least, we'll cover the mobile. I've set it up so that we'll actually see this content on top of the image on a mobile device. Now, again, we have the opacity set to one here, so it's definitely visible. And I had to adjust the margin so it would look different on mobile. If we look up earlier in our code, it's 74%, but check that out. That doesn't look great for a mobile device. It shifts everything around too much. So I set that at 60 for mobile. That's what worked for the layout that I have going on here. I also removed the grayscale filter so it'll be full color on a mobile device, completely customizable. Again, mobile devices don't have cursors. So don't put a hover effect on a mobile device. It's just not gonna work. So we'll go ahead and go back to desktop view, scroll up here. There we go, now we can see that transition, that fade from grayscale to full color and content visible on top of the image. Again, we've got a lot of things to adjust. Make sure the margin top, that's one of the most important things you can change, make sure that matches the size of the images and the layout on your site. After that, you can adjust the background linear gradient here. I just have it fading into a solid black at the bottom, super customizable. Play around with the padding and transition, but leave Z index and opacity alone. After that, right here, again, leave opacity alone, and this transition can be adjusted if you want it to. And this changes the color of the text, totally customizable, completely up to you. You can do it in the site styles menu too. It was just easy for me to throw that in there with some code. That one, completely customizable. Underneath that, we've got the grayscale transition for the image. You can flip flop this zero and one there to have it reversed, so it's full color and then grayscale on a hover or remove it completely if you don't wanna add a filter to those images. And then down here, we've reset these things on mobile so that the content is always visible on top of the list item media or the image, but you can adjust this margin top so it's the right size. However you modify this code, just select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. Now I've got one other hover effect I wanna show you. I'm going to remove all of this code here, so we'll go back to the way we were. There we go, our list item section, no hover effects, everything is normal. Then I'll paste this code here and check it out. When we hover over it, the image and content will flip, revealing a solid color background with the text on top. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's break this one down here. This is set to only happen on any screen larger than 640 pixels in width. So if we hop on mobile, the list section will display as it's intended to. This only happens on desktop or anything larger than 640, so hopefully it'll have that cursor to create this hover effect. Now the first part of this code creates the rotation that flips the text around, and again we've got that transition, this will take one second. Margin top negative 100% is what pulled that text up to the middle. Just like with the last code, change that to whatever you need it to be so that the text fits over the image, super customizable. I needed to add a lot of padding to the bottom, so I set that to 30%, and then the rest of the padding is set to one REM. So the text is not flush with the side, and we gave a little bit of padding to the bottom. I'll show you what happens when we remove those codes. Not only are we losing the bottom part of the picture because of the negative margin on the top there, but the text will be flush with the edge of the image, and I did not like that look. So I've added padding 30% to the bottom and then one REM around the text there, completely customizable. You can remove those or change the values however you see fit. Opacity zero is important, however. If we remove that, we'll see the reversed text on top of the image, which is not the look we were going for, so leave opacity zero. The next set of code that we have here is the hover effect itself. It says take that content 
and in one full second, I want you to transform it so it goes back to normal and make it visible. That's how we're getting that text rotating and showing up at the same time. Now the next line we have here says take the image, leave it exactly where it is. We've set this one up so it'll rotate back after the hover. Underneath that, we have the hover effect for that image. This is what's going to rotate it 180 degrees and make it disappear during the rotation. So that's how we get the image to disappear and the image to show back up. Last but not least, we have list item hover, list item media, transition and transform. Again, we're rotating it, but this is where the background color comes to play. I've added my favorite hex color code here, but you can use an RGB color code or a web safe color name. Maybe you want it to be pink. I'm gonna change it to pink and now it'll look like that when we hover over the list item. That's where we'll get that color. So just background color, how you see fit. We're gonna leave pretty much all of these other things alone here. Just make sure you adjust the padding and margin to suit the style that you're going for. After you're done making your changes, select save and you'll be good to go. All those codes that we just used are listed in the description below. Just make sure you update the right values so it looks perfect on your own website. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. Thank you so much for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're gonna love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.